Hey guys, OG Albina here, bringing you guys another pretty cool different type video to the channel. Now, I don't usually do, you know, like top 10 shiny Pokemon type videos or anything like that, uh, but today's going to be something a little bit like that. I was kind of just sitting back today, reminiscing, uh, thinking about how it's been a good 6-7 months since Gen 8 has come out, which uh, we've gotten to play with these new Gen 8 mods and kind of develop a new Generation 8 draft league meta and stuff like that. And uh, This has been a really exciting, uh, you know, generation for draft, at least in my eyes because not only will we have like you know the new generation meta we kind of have like little subcategories in between just because of how Pokemon decided not to include everything and leave some things out so uh, uh, we had the pre-home you know like Galar decks only meta which was kind of boring but you know it was still a meta nonetheless then we have post home where a couple cool mods got added in you know some moveset changes all that good stuff we have post DLC um you know, we have national decks, which was obviously, you know, more so showdown and including everything, including meg megas and stuff like that. We have post DLC national decks leagues and Galar decks leagues, which was including the data mined, um, what do you call it, move sets and stuff like that, and like move tutor moves that these Pokemon would be getting and stuff like that, or TR moves, not move tutor moves. And then we have the actual post DLC, which is like what we're just now, right now, jumping into with all the move tutors and all the mons that we, uh, you know, didn't know were coming back, obviously coming back in Galar decks and all that good stuff, all the new moves. So we've had a lot of different metas to play with, and uh, that's given me a chance to play a lot of Pokemon here in quarantine and try a lot of new things. And I figured it'd be a pretty cool video to go back and kind of reminisce on my top 10 uh, personal favorite Pokemon to use up to this point. Not necessarily like, you know, what I think are the top 10 best Pokemon in the format. No, that would be a completely different video. It would be a completely different list. It wouldn't be close to this one. Uh, but me personally, what I've enjoyed using um, uh, up to this point, what I've had a lot of fun with and maybe showcasing the replay and talking about how well that mod performed for me and, you know, what it can do for your team and all that good stuff. Um, but yeah, uh, before I jump into that though, if uh, you're new here, please consider subscribing. If you, you know, I have a bunch of people who are watching the Wi-Fi about stuff like that aren't sub and all that good stuff. And if you are enjoying them, please drop a sub. We're getting close to 300 here and I would love to hit that here pretty soon. It's a pretty big goal, but uh, we've been seeing some great growth on the channel. And I really do appreciate all you that are watching the video, clicking on it, uh, but definitely consider subscribing if you enjoy, you know, all things competitive Pokemon basically and all things draft league content and Wi-Fi battles, all that good stuff. Uh, but with all that stuff aside, let's jump right into some honorable mentions. All right, so as for some honorable mentions, we have, you know, uh, a good couple of ones here that I really did enjoy a lot using and playing with and all that good stuff, but they just didn't have the stuff to really make it in my top 10 because there's a lot of really cool mods who tried this gen. They just barely didn't make it. Uh, first off, I got to give a shout out to my boy Kingler. Um, absolutely tore out the GDL and showed why Dynamax and Gigantamax is an awful broken mechanic. We had Kingler and GDL, it was our tier 5 Dynamax, tier 5 Pokemon, and it went 24 and 3 in 9 games and brought us, uh, you know, carried us, honestly, in a really, really good season where we unfortunately lost in the finals to 6 foot hacks, but had a great season overall, and Kingler was, you know, really the main reason for that. Another one that we had, though, on that same GDL roster was uh, Haxorus, and Haxorus is a mod that I actually, well, I tried before, but I hadn't really, like, used Haxorus. Uh, it's, it was a mod that, when I drafted, it didn't really come to a lot of games. It did decent when it came, but it wasn't, like, you know, a big, big breaker centerpiece of the team or a big sweeper on the team. Um, I really, really enjoyed Haxorus in the GDL. It was our second on our team in kills uh, when we had stuff like Gengar, Cinder, and stuff like that. Haxorus was second, um, and I absolutely love building with it. It's such a monster, such a powerhouse. And I, uh, I loved using, more so than the DD sets, I loved using Sword Stance, I loved using just like Life Orb 4 attacks, Banded Haxers, I think has no switch ins, getting first impression and close combat this gen. Uh, it was an absolute menace to uh, switch into. Uh, I remember versus John in uh, GDL, it was one of our two losses in the regular season, but Haxers went crazy in that match and we didn't bring any sort of setup. We were Life Orb with um, close combat, I think, Dragon Claw, first impression Shadow Ball. Uh, for the Mimikyu and we were Mold Breaker so we went through that. Uh, we were, No, we were Earthquake instead of Close Combat because we were Wash. And Haxorus went nuts that game. Uh, it went absolutely crazy. I loved using it. Another really, really, really solid bond. Um, and then we're going to jump on to another two mods that I drafted together and really enjoyed. Uh, one being Aegislash. I think Aegislash is great. I think it's not as good as it was in the past, obviously, with the nerfs that it did receive in King Shield. Uh, you know, only doing minus one attack, I believe. I think that was the nerf. Uh, well, I know for a fact that it uh, went down to 140 in its defenses, which is pretty big. So I think Age of Slash was great. I don't think it's anywhere close to broken. And I think at this point in the metagame, 
that at this point in the generation, pretty much everybody will agree with me in that. But it was a lot, a lot of fun. Um, I drafted it with Hatterene for healing with support, and I had like, you know, some trick room offense. It was a lot of fun. And then another, it was actually my kill leader, I think. I think it was like 15 or 16 kills on the season. Loved it. It was great. And then on that team as well, we had Kyurem, and I think Kyurem is great. I loved it in Gen 7. It was one of my favorite, favorite dragons, especially because it was so slept on in like Tier 3 all the time. And now in Gen 8, uh, you'll see Kyurem in Tier 1 a lot of the time just because of the cool buffs that it got in Dragon Dance and Icicle Spear. And most importantly, excuse me, in Freeze Dry. Freeze Dry is awesome with the beat bulky waters a lot easier without having to be like, you know, sub -roost toxic and stuff like that. Uh, which sets, those sets are still obviously great. Um, Dragon Dance is really good as well. Uh, Karen was an absolute menace this season. And then lastly, it was Latios. I got a chance to use Latios in a recent season. It didn't play my best, but Latios was an absolute menace. I love dropping Life Orb Dracos and, uh, you know, throwing off big psychics called Mind. It got access to Agility and Aura Sphere and Mystical Fire and DLC. So great, great Pokemon. Um, but just unfortunately didn't make my top 10 like these other mods did. Um, and with that being said, let's just jump into number 10. All right, first up, we have a Pokemon that I've drafted just recently, and I've had an absolute blast using. Now, it's not necessarily the most broken Pokemon in the world. I won't lie to you when I say that, but I will say I've had an absolute blast using it, and I think it is an underrated gem, especially in that generation with no hidden powers, and that is going to be Mega Camera. Now, usually when you think of Mega Pokemon, you think of the big tier one guys, you know, the guys that you're going to spend all your points on, they're going to be the you know, center point of your team, all that good stuff, uh, but selling to the lower tier Megas get a lot of love, and Mega Camera is a Pokemon that I recently drafted in APA Evolution, and I have had an absolute blast using. Now, with no hidden power, obviously there is that four times weakness to water. That sucks, because, you know, water's a decent, uh, a pretty common typing to say the very least, but without hidden power, um, you become a lot, a lot more uh, useful defensively. This thing is incredibly bulky. You usually think of, when you think of Mega Camera, if you think of how it has 145 uh, special attack, 120 attack, with that sheer force boost, and a lot of really, really good, um, you know, with the fire ground coverage being very, very solid and all that good stuff. But it has great bulk too. 70 HP, 100 defense, 105 spadef, very solid. And if you pair that with a good trick room setter, you can potentially have, you know, a really, really terrifying Mons on your hand uh, if you're the uh, opponent facing against it. And that's gonna be the main case here. Uh, this is gonna be a game from my APA Evolution season that I wanted to showcase really quick, showing off what Camel can do and all that good stuff, where I actually end up bringing um, Trick Room Cofagoras into Eruption Mega Camel. And if you look at my opponent's team, uh, we played Tort this game. Their fire resist is a Keldeo and an Arcanine, neither of which take that very well. Um, so we're gonna speed up and try and find to the point where we can really get it in. Um, as right here, we're gonna go switch out, boop, boop, boop. Come on, let's see, Zen Headbutt. I'm trying to find exactly, oh, there we go. So right here, let's go back a turn. So we're gonna be in with our Keldeo versus the thing. We're going to be able to pick up a Zen Headbutt kill on the Arcanine, which is obviously pretty, pretty clutch. And from this point, Double is going to come out. Now, I'm going to go Hard Camel because I don't want to let this thing, you know, set up, get anything crazy. As they pull the Double out into their landers, but in my head, um, I'm thinking this is completely fine. Uh, they don't know this. They probably think they can live any one hit. But I know No Landers is taking an eruption from camera. We're going to clean knock that thing out and still be at full for later, which is pretty insane. So we're going to be able to skip ahead here because Camel, he's not done. No, 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 no. Camel is not done. We're going to go into Kofag and we're going to trick him up. Body press, switch out into Metagross, double out into Camel as they go for a Fire Blast. Now we're going to be able to pick up, you know, another big, big chunk of damage off of this Keldeo. 50% to the water type, by the way. 50%. It just shows how bulky this thing is. We're going to get burned, which is a little annoying, but you know, it's all good. It's all good. We're going to go out into Metagross, sack it off. Boop, boop, boop. Where are we at? Let's see how this goes. We're going to go hard into our guy here we're gonna flash cannon not do enough damage unfortunately however what we're gonna do is instead of picking up the kill on that thing and taking chip i'm gonna go hard out into my kofag because i know i take this thing on super super well and just set up yet another trick room and be able to pass a memento right into my camel which is obviously super super clutch nothing's gonna cotton guard it don't matter we're gonna memento out and Camel's gonna come in and just clean through the rest of my opponent's team, which is obviously clutch. I think this is a really cool game showcasing how well Camel can do in a Trick Room. However, I've brought in plenty of other sets. I've brought in Rest Talk. I've brought in, you know, uh, Rocks 3 Attacks a bunch of times as well. Very, very, very solid bond to say the very least. I absolutely love Camel. 
and I think it's super, super slept on, and especially in a meta with no hidden power. I think this is a Pokemon you should definitely try out if you're looking to try a new fun Mega. If you want to step away from your, uh, you know, Mega Zan, Mega Lopunny, Mega Medi, Gallade, all those really, really good tier one Megas, but um, say you want to get, you know, a little bit of points value and be able to draft some other cool stuff in the higher tiers with your extra points that you would get from uh, picking up Mega Camel here. And yeah, uh, that's going to be my number 10 Mon. Let's jump on to number nine. So our number nine Pokemon is going to be a special case. It's going to be Cinderace, but not just Cinderace as a whole, because I've actually drafted Cinderace a ton in Gen 8 so far. Um, and it's a good Pokemon, don't get me wrong. I do enjoy Cinderace a lot. But we're going to be talking about Libero Cinderace. And the reason it's so low on the list, despite how much I loved building with it and how good I think it is, um, it's not a Pokemon that I think should ever be allowed in standard draft. This was early Gen 8 when we are still figuring things out, you know, finding out what's broken, what's not broken, and all that good stuff. And um, Libero Cinderace is definitely broken. I, I had an NCP season six and it picked up, I think it got 18 kills, two deaths for me in about a 10 week season or something like that, uh, 10 or 12 weeks. It was absolutely insane. The reason I have it so low is because I know it's not a Pokemon I should be having in a standard league, uh, you know, without, you know, any Ubers or any, you know, S tier type Pokemon or anything like that. Um, and it's not a Pokemon that I'm probably gonna get to draft again, but I figured it deserves a spot on this list at the very least because of how much fun it was and how freaking good it was. Um, absolutely insane what this Pokemon can do with the Libero ability, obviously changing its type uh, to whatever move you end up clicking. So if I click Bulk Up, I'm a Fighting type. If I click Corp Change, I'm a Normal type. If I click Power Ball, I'm still a Fire type, which I think is really, really cool. This Pokemon's incredibly strong. It's incredibly fast. Uh, people compare it to Greninja a lot. I don't think that's necessarily too fair because I think they really fill two different roles when it comes to, um, you know, being that libero slash protean type mon and stuff like that. Cinderace is definitely better offensively as a whole, I think. Uh, it doesn't get crazy coverage, but the coverage it gets is what it needs. It gets power ball, it gets U-turn for, you know, stab U-turns off of like a base 120 something attack or something like that. Uh, I get sucker punch for priority, it gets high jump kick and gunk shot and iron head, so pretty solid coverage nonetheless. Um, bulk up for setup, which is obviously super nice, and you get the court change option. This Pokemon is really, really insane. It's so much fun to build with. It's so freaking strong. It's nothing more satisfying than uh, your opponent going into their fire resist, and you click banded U-turn and do 40% to it. Um, absolutely a blast to build with. For the game I'm going to showcase for this, it was going to be a um, bulk up sweep. In actually my first game that I played with it, well, it's not a bulk up sweep. It's a it's a bulk up end game. Uh, this might not have been my first game. I think this is actually a playoff game. Just playing against the same person I played my first game versus. But we're going to come in with our Cinderace. I'm going to click Powerball and knock this thing out. Obviously, I can't bulk up in its face because it'll just click Hyper Voice and probably kill me. So we're going to end up doing some big damage to it, though. Uh, Runa Regis is going to come out. This honestly is completely fine. Uh, they're going to try and double out into the Decidueye and catch me switching, but I'm going to bulk up because I know I can take any hit from the Rodriguez really easily um, as we're going to bulk up once again. They're going to Tailwind, which is actually pretty scary as they go into the Rodriguez, and I'm going to bulk up a third time, waste another turn of said Trick Room, and be able to just clean, uh, bring this thing down to super low with a Pyro Ball and as they click Curse, which is definitely very interesting. But this is honestly completely fine because I don't, need to be fast in this Pokemon. I am plus three attack and this is a stab sucker punch coming up so it's completely fine if I don't uh you know outspeed this because I can just pick it off with that sucker punch which obviously clutch. The curse is kind of wearing up here but it's uh, completely fine. I'm gonna click sucker on the Jolteon as unfortunately it clicks yawn on me which is another very very interesting bring um as I'm gonna kind of be forced to switch out because I do want to keep my uh you know Cinderace in the back for that potential decidua and stuff like that as they go out into the Jolteon. Uh, Volt Switch out as I believe I'm just going to Volt Switch myself and uh, go right back into Cinderace and pretty much just click a couple buttons here and be in a really, really good spot. So they're going to go hard, Jolteon. This is completely fine. I'm going to get 84% off and, uh, you know, really just be in a phenomenal position as they go uh, for a Volt Switch on my Flygon. I figured going into Flygon was pretty no drawback because I was Scarf and if they yawned, it just U-turned anyways. I'm going to be able to go into Cinderace this turn and be able to just click Pyro Ball and clean, knock that, that Decidueye. Very fun Mon. Um, I brought Banded more than I brought like Bulk Up and stuff like that. I, I brought Court Change a lot as well just because the Hazard Room option was very nice for the team in which I had um, and all that good stuff. But yeah, Cinderace uh, with Libero, obviously 
ridiculously good. It should never be allowed in the standard draft format, but if you do get a chance to use it, definitely pick that thing up immediately. It was a ton of fun. Now let's move on to number eight on our list. So next up, we have another Pokemon near and dear to my heart, a Pokemon I absolutely love drafting. It's by far my favorite Mega Engine 7. And shaping up to be my favorite in Gen 8 if things keep going the way they're going. And that is Mega Deancey. Now, uh, if you know Draft, you know what Mega Deancey does. It's fast, it clicks, it's strong, moon blasts, and power gems, and diamond storms, and earth powers, and all that good stuff. It's a good, fast rocker. It gets rock polish and calm mind, and a bunch and bunch of different tools. Um, so it was obviously already a phenomenal potential sweeper, a phenomenal wall breaker. Uh, but not only that, it got some great toys in the new DLC and uh, one being Mystical Fire, which is amazing for steel types like the Ferrothorn you see on your screen right there. Uh, obviously without hidden power it would usually typically pretty much wall this set, but Mystical Fire is a really nice tech in order to hit those steels that, you know, don't take a lot of damage from earth power like the Pharaohs, the Escabs, etc, etc, and all that good stuff. Uh, the Scizors on the Switch and stuff. So, uh, it's honestly a buffed hidden power of fire and it's just regular move pull, which is obviously really, really useful. It also got access to player off, which is really cool because now DNC can run full physical sets. It doesn't have to run mixed if it wants to, you know, be physically based a little bit with Diamond Storm. You can just run Max Jolly, uh, you know, DNC with player off and Diamond Storm and stuff like that. You will be missing out on coverage for steel types, but hey, this is Draft League, you know, you can run pretty much anything you want. Um, this is going to be a really, really cool game against my buddy, Grandmaster D-Ray and NCP just recently, uh, where you're going to see Rock Paul's DNC goes crazy in this game. Obviously, you're looking at my opponent's team, and you're thinking, ah, oh, they got rain, your rock type isn't a great sweeper. However, if I can position myself in a position where I can get up a Rock Polish, I think it does just win if I can get the sufficient chip on Ferrothorn, because we are rocking out with uh, Moonblast. I believe Power Gem and Mystical Fire, and it hits the entirety of my opponent's team really hard, and it gives me a sweeper that is not outsped by Mega Swamper in the rain. So I think that's very, very important. Outspeeds all Scarfers, does phenomenal in this match. So we're gonna jump into it. Um, we're gonna skip around a bunch just to kind of showcase DNC and skip past me getting absolutely hacked out these first few turns. Um, so we're gonna switch forward just a little bit. I believe you crit me turn one. Uh, and we're gonna switch around just just a bit here trying to pivot around this Zapdos which is obviously a menace Versus us just an absolute beast and we're gonna get paired a bunch We're gonna go into Zygarde. We were banned in that game So we did a bunch of freaking damage then we're gonna go into DNC a little bit of an aggressive play But hey, it's all good now right here. We're in a pretty cool position uh, Obviously he goes into the Ferrothorn thinking he can take the hit pretty pretty easily. However, even if he is um, You know if he is max fidef, he will be able to take that uh, mystical fire in the rain, which is obviously super annoying. Not the biggest deal in the world. We're going to get paired, and now we're going to be able to go into our Diancie. And based on prior damage, I can kind of tell you he's a little bit more fizz def. d actually did not know that this thing got mystical fire in Gen 8. We're going to be able to throw that off. We knew it was left over, and we're going to just clean knock that thing out for 66. Like, it's not going to live. He's going to go into the Dracovich, which says, I'm Scarf. So, uh, obviously, we're going to switch out. He makes a great double and catches us going into our slow bro. So great play on D-Ray's part. Um, this Zapdos is an absolute menace versus us. And he's playing very smart and figuring out a way to get it in when he can. Uh, we're going to be able to get a clean Toxic off on it because Registeel's fat and annoying, both of the above, uh, as they do end up U-turning out into the Pelipper as I uh, click Toxic again in case he didn't do that and we missed. So this game was going great for us. However, I'm going to be in a pretty solid spot because he's in with his... Uh, let's go back a turn. Let's see if I can pause it at the correct time. The skull's not gonna gonna knock us out. Um, I obviously know he probably isn't a scarf and stuff like that. Um, because I believe he switched up moves on me and stuff. And I'm in a position where I can just click a free moon blast. Uh, nothing really wants to switch and take this. Obviously, I could power gem, but it doesn't cover the swampert and it doesn't cover uh, it doesn't oko the Dracovish, which could potentially be a pivot. So I'm gonna click moon blast because this thing should always be in range of moon blast from this range because Mega DNT is ridiculously strong. He's gonna switch into the Dracovish, trying to make the aggressive pivot on our moon blast uh, on our power gem to live a hit and then threaten us out. However, we're gonna catch up with the moon blast, knock him out. And then Swampert's gonna come in, it's gonna do annoying Swampert things, but thankfully we have a slow row, which is a beast. Um, then when this uh, rain ends, after we saw it out correctly, teleport out into our wall breaker, we're gonna throw off a big moon blast and be able to do a freaking ton of damage or something. They're gonna sack the rain, which is good, because now we just have to stall out the rain. Now we just have to, you know, get enough turns to where we can win the game with our Diancy in the end, which is obviously phenomenal. So I'm gonna go into Zygarde right here. I'm gonna pretty much just sack it off. 
Um, I didn't really have much for it at that point, um, and I didn't want to get too akio by an earthquake on the switch in by this uh, swapper. So I'm basically just gonna continuously click slack off. Um, I catch him with a scald right here in the Ravombi. I think that crit did matter, but we take it after all the hacks we got this game. Uh, they're gonna go into the Zapdos. This is completely fine. It's in my head, I'm saying, yeah, I know that there's a lot of turns left of rain, but this is a position I wanted because it's probably the one Pokemon that I can set up a Rock Polish on. So if I can get up a Rock Polish right here, I will outspeed the Pert in the rain and I'll be able to win this game. Um, however, like I said, the Hacks Gods were not on our side this game. I'm going to get up a Rock Polish. They're going to click Thunderbolt, obviously the best play. And they're going to get the Para, which is so freaking bad. So now at this point, what I have to do is potentially just kind of... Um, find an opportunity to, uh, you know, get off, you know, salt this rain. And thankfully we have Mystical Fire and actually it's going to come up clutch here because what I'm going to do is this next turn, I'm going to click Mystical Fire. Hope I don't get paired. I do not. Thunderbolt's going to come out. It is not going to knock me out, which is super clutch. And then I'm not going to get paired, knock out the Zapdos. And if we don't get paired in this last turn, we just need one more turn. We're going to win. We're going to throw off a Moonblast. We're going to knock out the part, and Diancy is going to clutch up, picking up five kills that game, absolutely putting the team on its back, uh, showing that despite playing against one, two, three water types of Ferrothorn, um, it's still an absolute menace. It's an absolute beast offensively. It's so hard to deal with, and I absolutely love this Pokemon. I've only drafted it once in Gen 8 so far, and I've only had it for about six, seven weeks, and it's already back up there, um, you know, in my top 10 favorites. So. I definitely, uh, you know, expect myself to draft this thing multiple times throughout the generation and I expect it to climb the list. But for now, it's chilling here uh, towards the bottom just because we haven't used it as much or gotten even a full season in with it up to this point. But uh, regardless, it's very, very solid and I absolutely love using this thing. On to the next. Next up, we have Conkeldur. Now, Conkeldur was a Pokemon that I never would have thought would have been in, you know, my top 10 favorite mons uh, to use during this gen, but I was pleasantly surprised when I drafted it really early on. Um, I drafted it with Dragapult, which spoilers may or may not be on the list later on, but these two things carried me the entire season. I ended up uh, having like one or two losses on the season. I remember Dragapult had like, you know, almost 20 kills. Conk had like 17, and the next highest member on my team was like a Rotom Heat with like four or five kills. They definitely hard carried me in the season, and they were phenomenal. Conk especially really surprised me. I expected Dragapult to be great. Conk, you know, obviously a really, really, really strong wall breaker. Thrown off guts boosted hits with facade knockoff for coverage and you know poison jab for fairies earthquake it gets access to bulk up and mock punch which is awesome for its slow speed this thing's an absolute menace and really hard to switch into um i'm going to be showcasing two replays today actually the first of which is a little bit more of an unconventional it's going to be a uh, bulk up concelder sweep which is actually really really cool it does phenomenal in this game as you can see and then the second of which is just going to be guts play more clicking buttons so yeah with that being said, let's jump into the first one right here. We're going to have to skip ahead just a little bit, but this is going to kind of show off the uh, the natural bulk here of uh, Big Conkelder. We actually brought a really cool team this week, I remember. I was a uh, weakness policy reflect Dragapult. Uh, unfortunately, this is a Scarf Flareon, so this really threw me for a loop because in my head, I thought, hey, I kind of win this game. I can just click you know, Shadow Ball slash Dragon Darts and kind of clean up at this point. Uh, but this is Scarf Bite, unfortunately, and it's going to go off first, hit me. I'm going to do a lot with the Shadow Ball, but not enough to take it out. So, but this is, uh, this is a completely fine in my eyes, though, because this gives me a completely free opportunity to switch in and set up with my Conk if that bite does nine, because it's a, it's a, it's a bite. Uh, they're going to go into the Mandibuzz. Buzz. This is completely fine with me, though, because Brave Words are going to be bouncing off me. Foul Plays aren't going to be doing anything either and if they want to uh toxic me or something like that i am still guts on this set so i'm gonna be able to throw off a plus one drain punch to this mandibuzz as it does 23 percent with the foul play and we beat this 1v1 100 percent of the time because even if it wants to roost then we're going to be su doing super effective damage obviously um and we're going to be able to drain punch pretty much all of our health back here in conjunctions with our leftovers which is obviously nice and nothing's gonna break through my guy can kill her here and mock punch clean knocks out the zero or from 41 which is obviously super clutch. Flareon, no things. Good night. We're going to be able to mock punch that dude. 
and out comes the Cobalion. Close combat's going to bounce off. That did 31%. Uh, that is a stab 120 base power move coming off Cobalion, which isn't the strongest thing, but it's still a very strong move. That did 31% to us. And we're gonna just be able to drain punch, yoink all that back, and pick up a nice clean bulk up Conkelter Sweet, which I think was a pretty cool one. Being able to, uh, you know, show off the uh, Conkelder here uh, in a more unconventional way. And this replay is more so just gonna be here. I'm gonna put it on fast because it's not, there's not a set point in time where Comp goes crazy. It's more so just Comp goes crazy in this game. Uh, I was just Guts Flame Arbor with this set. I remember I was. Guts, uh, Drain Punch, Mock Punch, Knock Off, and Facade. And if you look at my opponent's team, they do not have a switch in to those moves. Facade does a ton to Coco. It does, um, Knock Off does a ton to Decidueye. And I can pretty much Drain Punch everything else. And obviously, Rayquaza isn't going to take a Facade or a Knock Off very well. Uh, this obviously is an Uber's League. I have Mega Meds on this team. But let's go ahead and jump into it. We can kind of show it off here a little bit as we kind of just um, see Conkelder really, really go off in this game and put them in the hyper fast. And my goal this game was to play, play as aggressive as humanly possible in trying to get in my Conkelder in order to put it in a position to really click buttons. It's right here. And double in, obviously, on the Decidueye coming in to try and block my spin as I try and spin uh, the rocks away and stuff like that. And with the Reflect Up, I'm not really worried about Decidueye at all. And that's going to allow me to throw off a big, big knockoff and allow me to proc my flame orb. And this thing uh, obviously does nothing with the reflect up. I'm going to knock off, clean, knock that thing out. And that's the first of many for Big Kong this game. Uh, now you see the only issue is Rayquaza exists and I do not have a switch in. But now rocks are going to be gone, which is obviously nice. And I'm going to take that opportunity to get in my uh, conk as they end up setting up rocks for themselves at this point, which is completely fine because this thing does not take a hit from my conk very well at all. Um, we can pretty much drain punch any health that it does back to us and knock off might even be able to do it for it. So um, out comes the Quagsire. This is completely fine because I'm going to be able to knock off, get rid of these things leftovers. And actually, despite this thing being max fist F, facade is plenty enough to clean knock this thing out as we're gonna clean knock out the quag which is actually a big issue to a lot of my potential win cons in this game uh namely the scolipede which can actually win later on if we do play correctly now rayquaza is going to be able to come in which is a problem because that's just going to be another sack force right here um as i'm going to go into blast i'm going to try and spin away just one more time as the coco is going to come out and unfortunately not going to outspeed this guy and we're going to get knocked out the following turn to a wild charge uh, we're going to go into Scolipede, use this as an opportunity to break just a little bit, um, be able to take out the Coco, which is nice because it was very fast and very annoying for our team, and it's just one less issue that Conk has to deal with. Mammoth Spine's going to come in right here, but this is going to let me to go into Conk yet another time. Now, right here, I'm going to make a bit of a play. Uh, I obviously think they're going to save the Mammoth Spine because it's very important in stopping my Salamence in the end game. Uh, so I'm just going to click Drain Punch and expecting the uh, potential Bronze Ox switch in, which in hindsight, I guess Mock Punch into Drain Punch would have knocked this thing out. Um, but regardless, I'll take the damage off of the, uh, you know, the Drain Punch. Now, obviously, we're going to see here that um, Rayquaza is a big issue, yada, 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 and all this good stuff. Um, however... Conk did its job this game and was able to really break through my opponent's team and kind of give me an end game where, uh, despite an awful matchup, I did get a little bit lucky in the sense that I was able to, um, what do you call it? Oh my goodness. I was able to, uh, break through with Conk and then win with a para in the end, as you're gonna see. And no, Kurt is not gonna be happy when I show this game on here because I totally did get lucky. Body slam, knock out the ray, and then para happens, another body slam, and we're gonna be able to win there. Now, I know Kurt's not too happy with that one, but um, regardless of Kong not auto-winning the game, I figured this was a good replay to showcase how strong that Pokemon is and huh, what it can do if you play aggressively and position it correctly. Even without, you know, that Trick Room support, it can be really, really good against, you know, more offensive, more frail builds like Kurt's here in this matchup. Um, and really putting a lot of work. Uh, but yeah, Conk is going to be there chilling at number seven on our list. Let's jump to number six next. Next up at number six, we have my boy Melmetal. Now, Melmetal was a very, very, very hyped mon. Um, you know, people were very hyped to try this thing when Generation 8 came out. And we had items and, you know, we obviously had in the game and all that good stuff. And I will say this thing does not disappoint. It is incredibly powerful. It's incredibly bulky and annoying. Um... I think it's a bit underutilized in some players' hands when they just kind of slap a choice band on and they're like, oh, choice band, double aim, bash. However, uh, 
this is obviously great. There's a lot of teams that just don't deal with banned and double iron bash. However, um, I think at this point in the meta, people know how to build around it, you know, stopping that. But the prep that that forces in itself is obviously phenomenal. I'm looking at some calps for this thing, it's pretty insane how much double iron bash just off of rip does to a lot of Pokemon. Um, but I don't really have any replays that really showcase how like you know melmetal sweeping or melmetal being incredibly dominant in the game melmetal was a pokemon that in the ncp season six this is the same team i had libero cinderace on actually um it was a pokemon that came in week in week out picked up one or two kills it usually didn't die and uh just kind of fulfilled its role on my team as a bulky strong breaker you know really strong tank uh throwing off big double iron bashes and potential ice punch and thunder punch and things like that and if you look at my opponent's team, they don't deal with Melmetal very well. In this game in particular, I was Assault Vest Melmetal. And I just kind of wanted to show off the bulk of this thing. Because I remember looking at Alex's team afterwards. Shouts out to my boy, Chase. Um, he was actually a Life Orb Magikarp Clef, if I remember correctly. And I just kind of wanted to show off how little this Fire Blast is going to end up doing to my Melmetal. So I'm going to switch it in hard. Stealth Rock Squab. This is completely fine. Fire Blast is going to come off do 27%. Now, now that I think back, that might not be life orb damage, but regardless, that is a fire blast coming off and trying to hit my lowest stat. And I was just a little, you know, decently bulky assault vest melmetal, and that did 27%, which is insane to me. That is not a three hit KO. That is barely a, uh, you know, barely a four hit KO in all honesty, which is pretty, pretty insane to me. And double iron bash obviously going to blow this thing away. So I figured this would be a cool, um, just kind of a little tidbit to show how strong it actually is as a Pokemon. Um, I really, really do enjoy Big Melmetal. I think it's an absolute beast. Uh, it's not one of those Pokemon that I think is very flashy, like your Libero Cinderace that's sitting on the screen and all that good stuff, or your um, Mega Deancey or anything like that. But it's going to be really, really solid. It's going to force a lot of prep, and it's really going to help the team out and really help it shine and stuff like that. So. Uh, we'll just kind of hyper fast to this replay um, and Yeah, I guess we can just kind of skip on to the next thing. I do end up winning this game by the way I, I figure I should just say that out loud because you know, I put it on the screen <laughs> uh, Regardless, you're gonna see even that focus. Oh, which is a really good play by Alex though, actually him clicking focus blasting into 46 off of him But that's not even a 2 KO, and I'm assuming he's very invested. So uh, that's obviously a very very good play by him, but and we were Jilly knocked out, which is awesome. But that's going to be Melmetal. It was a Pokemon that, again, like I said, isn't super flashy, but it's very strong and it fits a lot of roles really well. And I think in the right player's hands, when you're not just slapping a choice band on every week and hoping for the best, it's going to do really, really well. Uh, but with that being said, let's jump on to number five. All right, and at number five, and you have no idea how happy I am to say this, uh, we have my boy, my mascot, one of my favorite mons of all time, number two on my list personally, and that's going to be Salamence. Now, uh, my history with Salamence is a little bit weird because obviously it's one of my favorite mons. It's my mascot right now. I absolutely love big mints, uh, but I've only drafted once in Gen 7. I drafted it once really early on in my draft career, probably like, you know, three or four months in, and I performed decently with it. I remember it went like, you know, you know, eight and four, nine and five, something like that throughout a whole season. But it was supposed to be the centerpiece of my team and it did not perform to the level in which I wanted it. Um, but I think that was honestly after using it, and I'm uh, happy to say this, I think this was that was due to my inexperience as a builder and as a player, especially as a builder, because Mence is such, such a good Pokemon. Now I'm not, you know, claiming it's a top five tier one or anything, but I've absolutely had a blast using it in APA Evolution. It's in the top five in kills right now for the league, and I'm having an absolute blast building with it. And something I think is really slept on with Mens, which we're not gonna showcase in this replay, we're gonna showcase standard DD Mens, which is obviously, Phenomenal, but I think special mints is amazing in this gen, especially because it finally got access to some good flying staff and hurricane. And man, does that hit hard! I think I showed it earlier on in my replay for Camel, uh, but against Tort in one of these games, I actually ran Skyplate like modest hurricane. I did like 60-70% to a Clefable on the Switch, and it still has base 110 special attack, so it's very, very strong in that respect. It's very bulky, it has two great abilities, Intimidate and Moxie. It loves the addition of Heavy Duty Boots, which I believe I was in this specific game, and um, I really do think Mince is an absolute powerhouse. I love using it, and I'm so happy that my, uh, you know, my favorite mod all time is actually showing to put in some work for me and stuff like that. So I might be a little bit higher up on the list than 
um, some others, honestly just because of the fact that I love it so much. But today we're going to be showcasing, I mean today, uh, for men's we're going to be showcasing a, uh, another replay from APA Evolution. I believe this is my week two game against Cult. And um, this was a position where I thought in my head, damn, I'm kind of getting destroyed right here. But looking at the pieces of my opponent's team, the specific men's set that I ended up bringing is in a phenomenal position at this point. Um, there's a weakened Landorus, there's a weakened Azumarill, a uh, Neoligo that's gonna die at plus one most likely, Rotom Heat that I can potentially set up on, a Dracovish which I can potentially set up on as well and we kill at plus one, and then a Scizor, uh, which we can kill. Our set in particular this week that I'm talking about is gonna be Dragon Dance, Dragon Claw, Thunder Fang, Fire Fang, which is obviously really uh, solid. We have the Azumarill chipped into range in which we need it to uh, obviously be in range of set hit. So I'm in up with my co on this uh, Scizor as my opponent is going to U-turn out. Who's their technician, excuse me? And go into the Dragovish. Now I'm completely fine with sacking off my Kofag here because at this point, one, I don't have a switch into the uh, Dragovish whatsoever. I, I just don't have it. And two, I see this is my best opportunity to potentially set up now. If this thing is not choiced in any way and it has like an ice finger or something like that, it's obviously not a good look for big mints there because we'll probably be put in range of bullet pump. However, with the mummy obviously proccing on the Dragovish, it's going to lose a strong draw ability. It's not going to be as strong. We're going to be able to go into our boots vent and intimidate it to where anything this thing wants to go for is absolutely bouncing off of vent. So this is going to allow me a pretty free dragon dance in this scenario, as I am going to go for said dragon dance as the Azu comes out. And that's usually a pretty solid check here, but at the range of help this is at, and uh, you know, with our tag message, we guarantee knock this thing out with a Thunder Fang, which we're going to clean knock it out. If we're Moxie, we feed up phenomenal spot right now as they go into the Rotom. I click Dragon Dance as they click Toxic. They are unfortunately going to miss. That's really unfortunate for my opponent. However, um, I still think I could have won without it. It just might not have been only Mints cleaning up the game. But um, Azera was still at full and it took on a majority of my opponent's team at this point, which is obviously nice. Uh, but we're going to be off off a big Dragon Claw, crit and knock that thing out. And at this point, it's uh, pretty much GG, it's meant. So we're very bulky. We take 30% from that bullet punch. We're going to be able to fire Fang and then Dragon Claw through the entire rest of my opponent's team. Big Mints picking up all six kills in this matchup, coming in and clean sweeping with a really nice bulky Intimidate boot set, uh, which I think is, again, a really, really nice buff for this one. So I'm really happy this thing, uh, you know, on, on my opinion at the very least, got better here in Generation 8 with the uh, addition of boots with the addition of a better flying stab, uh, at least on the special side. I wish this thing got brave bird and it'd be pretty insane, but I don't think it, you know, makes too much sense thematically. It'd be cool though, uh, a guy can dream. Um, and also the, uh, you know, loss of hidden power. So a lot of these, you know, more annoying mods are easier to shut up on. Oh, excuse me. It is getting late and I'm trying to record all this in one night. So I apologize for the yawning, but Obviously, big man's picking up a kill, uh, picking up six kills there. He's doing great for me and Evo as a whole. Uh, and yeah, with that being said, let's jump on to what is it, number four. Now, just missing out on the top three, chilling at number four on our list is going to be Zara Aura. Yet another Pokemon from our APA Evolution team that I've uh, drafted recently, a team that I've absolutely loved, loved building and playing with. Uh, I may upload a movie of my season, depending on how that goes and all that good stuff. You know, postseason stuff like that. But for now, uh, let's just say that, you know, the team is a lot of fun to build with. And Zero Aura is a huge, huge part of that. Now, I absolutely love this thing. It's incredibly fast, it's incredibly strong. It has great offensive coverage. It's, you know, a perfect mod for me in all honesty. Now, this is my week, last week game of Evo, I forget exactly which week it was, but we were going up against Gran, and his team was incredibly, incredibly weak to Zero Aura. We were a mixed expert belt uh, for attack set on this one right here. We were Plasma Fist, Play Rough, Close Combat, and uh, Grass Knot. Grass Knot obviously for the Palo Sand, uh, Close Combat, and Play Rough, and all that stuff, and uh, Plasma Fist hit my opponent's team incredibly, incredibly hard. The offensive coverage was phenomenal. And as you can see right here, we're actually in a pretty, pretty tough spot with our uh, with our team right here. We're in a very bad spot defensively. It looks like, obviously, he has a lot of mons left, and we don't have many. But all three of my mons are at 100%. They're all three of my offensive win cons, or my three best offensive mons in this particular matchup and all that stuff. And, uh, yeah, with that being said, let's kind of jump into it. Uh, 
this is our ore right here is in a really solid spot thanks to my boy Mergy Mega Camera really taking on this uh, Umbreon and really chipping it down to range to where I can pretty comfortably click uh, play rough opposed to close combat obviously getting the chip on the palisand that I would need in order to potentially knock it out with a grass knot so that's the play we're going to make right here they do make the pivot out into palisand completely fine because I'm going to get the damage off that I uh, really do need to knock this thing out I guarantee lived in earth power if this didn't knock it out as well so down that goes which is obviously super nice now out comes the Mega Beedrill. This turn, I'm going to like to stay in. I lived even uh, a uh, drill run from this thing, and I was creeping ahead of the Beedrill, actually, just trying to get super aggressive on them, you know, potentially getting super aggressive with their creeps. Um, but we're going to be able to stay in on this thing's U-turn and basically claim yet another kill, which is obviously nice. The Umbreon's going to come right back out just to go down to this Plasma Fist. Obviously, super, super clutch. Now, out comes the Beedrill once again. And I'm in a pretty good spot right here. I can go into my Salamence. I was Rocky Humming. Unfortunately, I was knocked off right in the match, or we wouldn't be able to knock this thing out no matter what it went for. Um, however, this thing's going to get intimidated. And they can't come back in on rocks. It's completely fine. And I'm not too at care by Poison Jab. Now, right here, I do make a bit of a misplay in my head. I did get a little bit greedy, as I was talking about with Mints in the one before this. I love this thing. It's one of my favorite mods, and I wanted it to get the sweep. Um, however, I was a very bulky set, and I knew that if he was a more fast speed drill creeping like Max Zera, I wouldn't have been able to outspeed him after a dragon dance. So my play here is just to take my kill and click Earthquake and, uh, you know, obviously knock this thing out or catch a potential Primarina coming in or even just click Dragonfall. I guess it didn't really matter and all that, in all honesty. But regardless, I'm going to click Dragon Dance here. Not the best play on my end, won't lie. That's obviously a bit, a bit of a throw there, unfortunately. Uh, but what it's going to allow me to do is go out into my crustal. I know I can guarantee take a hit from this thing. I'm not going to uh, shell smash up because I don't outspeed it. We're going to be able to knock out the... Uh, you know, Beedrill with our Crustle. Now, at this point in the match, um, I should outspeed this Primarina because we're very offensive and very fast. We're going to be able to knock out the Primarina with Earthquake. And uh, in my head, uh, two things can happen. One of which is he is Focus Ash. He does not knock me out with a Psychic right here. So what I can do is Shell Smash up and then Rock Blast to potentially knock him out. Even if I don't get enough hits to knock him out or for some reason two doesn't knock him out, I can outspeed and knock out with Zera the next turn. Or... If he's life orb, he guaranteed knock us out, but then my Zero Aura comes in and cleans up the game. So Psychic's gonna come out, it's gonna clean knock us out. However, that means he is 100% life orb. I'm gonna Plasma Fist, knock out the Zam, pick up a 1 0 win on the back of uh, Zero Aura and Crustle there. Um, this thing was a great breaker in this game, as you obviously saw. I was able to knock out the Umbreon, it was able to knock out the Palace, which was supposed to be the check, and it was able to pick up the game against Zam, which is a very, very very fast Pokemon, but nonetheless, we're able to outspeed it with Zero's blinding speed and able to pick up a KO. Now, this is another Pokemon kind of like Melmetal where it hasn't necessarily like popped off and really like you know swept anybody yet, but it's very, very good nonetheless. And it always comes in, always picks up one or two kills, and it always does its job. Uh, bulk up is a really cool option as well. I just haven't had the matchup to you know really exploit that. Um, but like I said, I love mixed, I love you know, uh, you know, potential like lure berries on this thing as well are very, very good. Uh, very very solid Pokemon though, nonetheless and yeah with that being said let's crack right into the top three starting out our top three we have one of my all-time favorite Megas making its uh you know way on the list and that's going to be Mega Aerodactyl now if you can't tell already I love my fast strong breakers my fast strong cleaners and Mega Aerodactyl is definitely one of those Pokemon uh, tough claws boost and hits are obviously coming off and hitting really hard with this thing It's a really fast rocker um, and it can be incredibly bulky in a draft format with uh, you know bulky roost sets uh, Especially when you don't really need to run a lot of speed on this thing in order to really do a lot of work um, and You know you're able to outspeed a lot of potential scarfers as well um, You know like scarf heat trans and you know, stuff around that Mark and good stuff like that. Edgequake is obviously a deadly, deadly combination, especially when you throw, you know, potential an aerial ace or an ice fang or fire fang or something like that. It really does go crazy, and I got a really cool new toy in Gen 8, in my opinion, in Dragon Dance. Now, a lot of people don't think Mega Arrow really takes uh, well advantage of Dragon Dance, just because of the fact it's already so fast, and you can uh, already use Home Claws as a boosting, uh, you know, move to not only boost its attack but also boost its um, accuracy for its inaccurate rock stab, which would either be, you know, Stone Edge or Rock Slide, or in the case of Gen 8, it actually got access to Rock Blast, which is another move we have on this set. 
um, or a DD Rock Blast set actually, which is uh, really, really good in this matchup in particular. Um, but yeah, a lot of people don't think that Dragonus is very good on this thing, but I tend to disagree. I think it's very matchup dependent. And I think that's what's really cool about it getting Dragonus. If you're in a matchup where you're really worried about a potential square for outspeeding you or something like that, you don't want to run, you know, max speed, jolly it out, speed it, you could potentially be DD and not only boost your attack, but boost your speed while you're at it and, you know, cover all bases on some potential, you know, weird square for and things like that. Excuse me. Um, it's obviously really clutch if you're playing against a slower team where you're not as worried about that home claws is definitely your best bet because then you won't be missing your stone edges or your um rock slides or your rock blasts or anything like that which or your um elemental fangs which are you know a bit inaccurate stuff like that. so i think it's very matchup dependent and this matchup in particular though we are dragon dance and i think this is a perfect matchup to show off that dragons is actually dragon dance is actually a really really cool buff for mega arrow in this instance now we're getting towards the end game here and uh my end game with aerodactyl is looking super super clean actually uh if it's not a scarf gaff which i believe at this point we've kind of shown that's not yeah it's life orb so we know at this point it's not uh you know anything that can really threaten out my arrow provided him it moves and we know that we outspeed a mega houndoom uh it's looking like it just auto wins the game right here so uh we go into a double down because i believe the last turn uh he brought a really cool um curse weakness policy mammo which was really really clutch actually it really saved him you know the game as a whole in all honesty because this pokemon is really good versus me what i'm going to do is kind of pivot around this thing to where uh, i get the toxic chip to take it out as my ride on goes down now in this double down here what i'm going to do is i'm going to go into my latios because it covers pretty much anything if the mega houndoom uh, wants to potentially come in the turn afterwards that's completely fine in all honesty um what do you call it? We can potentially sack off our Cinderace and then go into our Aerodactyl and do some work from there. If the Salamence wants to come in, we obviously take that thing on very well and we obviously uh, knock out the Galvantula most likely as well because we are a life or body of something that's really, really well in this game. Um, and another thing this is going to allow me to do is scout for the Scarf on the Salamence, which we're going to see right here. It is Intimidate, but it is actually Choice Scarf as that crit definitely didn't matter. We dropped to that regardless. But what this is going to allow me to do is it's going to allow me to come in set up a dragon dance right off the rip um and this is going to allow me to outspeed that scarf immense and uh you know take it out and obviously not risk a crit or you know you know something crazy like an aqua tail crit to knock us out because we were pretty bulky as well um rock blast was really cool in this matchup obviously for like a lead galvantula um it covered you know mostly just to leave galvantula in all honesty but it was a pretty cool option nonetheless in this matchup and despite uh, you know, this Mint's coming in and intimidating us, and that's obviously another cool plus side to Dragon Dance, we're able to bypass that Intimidate, essentially. We're gonna be able to just off a, you know, a Rock Blast, we're gonna get three hits, and I believe we knock this thing out. And, uh, we're gonna be able to pick home, take home a pretty nice sweep here with Mega Aerodactyl. I do think Dragon Dance is a really cool buff for it, I think it's pretty slept on. I think this mod in general is pretty slept on. I think it's amazing, it outspeeds literally everything in the meta, pretty much, that's of relevance and uh yeah very very solid mod nonetheless and let's jump on to number two at number two we have one of the most beloved pokemon of generation eight and i believe our first generation eight exclusive pokemon on the list so far um i guess you have melmetal uh, but our first like gen 8 certified pokemon uh, in my eyes at the very least in dragapult now everybody and their mother loves dragapult uh you and me both buddy it's phenomenal it's a great great pokemon it's incredibly fast and again I love my fast potential breakers and cleaners, and Dragapult is one of those Pokemon. Uh, Dragon Ghost is a really, really cool typing offensively. It has great special coverage. DD sets are very good in draft depending on the potential matchup, and actually this, uh, the replay that we're going to show in this uh, portion of the video is actually going to be a DD Phantom Force Sweep, which is obviously super, super clutch. We were sub, Dragon Darts, DD, and Phantom Force, because um, obviously my opponent's fair type is a Rebulby, and I want to be able to hit that, and other than that, Dragon Dance kind of goes crazy in this particular matchup, but back on to Dragon Bolt more so as a Pokemon before we jump into the replay. Very fast, not the strongest on the special side, but like I said, it's um, speed makes up for it because you can often go modest in a good majority of matchups if you're running a special set and going with like, like a Life Orb or a Specs or something like that. With this thing, the coverage is, um, excuse me, very, very, very solid. It has 125 attack as well. It has pretty passable bulk. 
can be used in a multitude of ways, and that's access to Hex, so you can like throw will o -Wisp or Thunder Wave shenanigans on your Dragon Ball and go Hex sets, U-turn for momentum, phenomenal, phenomenal Pokemon. It also gets dual screens too, uh, and like I showed earlier in the video, we ran a really cool Reflect Weakness Policy set, uh, which is obviously super dope, and I've seen uh, DD Dragon Dance sets, uh, I mean, uh, Weakness Policy Dragon Dance sets go crazy. I almost lost one in GDL when Ready HLD brought it versus me, it was very scary. Um, but yeah, with that being said, let's go ahead and jump into this game against my good buddy Burn. He's a really, really cool dude. I do love Burn. He's an awesome guy. Um, but let's go ahead and kind of skip forward just a little bit and kind of show off the awesome. So there we go. Cool. So I believe it happens right here. We're going to get a little bit of damage. We're going to go hard pull on the Reuniclus as it does end up recovering. And this I see as my opportunity to set up a Dragon Dance because I know my opponent's not set up and I know they're not going to want to switch in, uh, you know, stay in with this thing as they attempt to psych off the Rabombi. However, what we're going to do is set up a big old Dragon Dance. And with the lefties uh, in conjunction with the turns we're dissipating from Phantom Force, uh, we're going to be getting a lot of HP back um, over time, even, you know, with any chit that we may potentially take. As the move less is going to come out, completely fine with me. I'm back up to 100, and then I'm going to be able to throw off a big Phantom Force. And with the spikes up and the uh, rocks, I didn't really have to worry about a Drapion potentially catching me on a turn where I click the Phantom Force and it switches out and switches and hits me the turn afterwards. Um, I always knock that thing out from that range, which is obviously clutch with the spike support and the rock support, which I do think that Dragapult really does appreciate is because it's not the strongest thing in the world. It really does appreciate that hazard support and, you know, getting up spikes and rocks and really chipping things down for it over the course of the game. And that's definitely what happened in this specific instance. So I'm going to throw off yet another Phantom Force. You're going to see my opponent just does not have a Ghost Resist on this team other than Drapion. That thing did not like taking a plus two, uh, you know, boosted Dragon Darts. And right here, I'm going to Phantom Force as this thing was for an Iron Defense. And oh lord, this is scary because I still does 49. That does a lot. However, this is about how we are potentially losing only one right here. So I'm gonna dragon dance up here. I'm gonna substitute as the iron defense happens, and I believe a dragon dance one more time. And what I'm trying to do here is I'm essentially playing for a crit because this is the demonic, you know, stored power double dance for uni. I forget what my dark type was. I drafted one. Don't yell at me, all of APA. But apparently, uh, Burn just didn't think it was going to come this game, which is completely fair because, you know, sometimes I do draft lackluster dark types as well. Uh, that's something, you know, I definitely do do sometimes. I'll hold on to that. But regardless, um, I'm going to just continuously throw a Phantom Force, hoping I get a crit at this point. As uh, you're going to see, I do not on that turn. However, we're going to live this for a stored power, which is obviously clutch. I'm going to Dragon Darts here, trying to get a crit on them. Uh, you know, I don't know exactly. I guess I could have Phantom Force that turn as well. Paul Mine's going to come out. This is completely fine because I'm just going to Phantom Force and I'm going to crit and knock this thing out. This is going to allow Dragapult to clean pick up this game. Uh, Dragapult was obviously the team MVP for me in this season of, uh, you know, I believe it was, you know, I, for, I forget what this league was called. The is a deep, distant uh, memory from the past, but very, very solid team. This was the Dragapult Conk team that really went crazy. It's like the one game I didn't bring Conk and Dragapult just said, hey, I got you, bro. Let me put them on. Let me put this team on my back real quick. Picked up a sweep. This thing got like 20 kills in the season. Absolutely love using it. I really want to draft it again um, now that the meta is kind of settled down a little bit and I feel like I could use it even better uh, depending on the team that I draft around it. But yeah, with that being said, let's jump on to number one on our list, the long-awaited number one. And at number one, we have our APA Season 6 Kill Leader, Big Necrozma. Um, this should be the surprise of no one who really knows me well. I absolutely loved using this Pokemon. Not only was it the Kill Leader of, you know, uh, our APA team, it was just the APA Kill Leader in general. Um, in the shortened season that we had, it picked up 13 kills for us. It was uh, by far our best performer. I love building with this thing, especially if you draft in a role where it doesn't need to be bulky and defensive in a lot of games. It's a lot like me in that sense, I think. Um, a little bit less so in the fact that you need to like, you know, draft specific roles around it so it doesn't have to do certain things. Mew is obviously way more versatile. Um, but Necro, if you can put it in a position where it can always be the set of sweeper or something like that, there's pretty much always a set that can come and potentially win in the game. This thing has so many options when it comes to setup. It has Dragon Dance as a vision, it has Swords Dance as Calm Mind, it has Autonomize, 
and has trick room, it has morning sun for recovery, it has ridiculous coverage, it can be physical, it can be special, it can be bulky and annoying with like, you know, a toxic morning sunset and, you know, maybe some Rocky helmet action. This thing is so ridiculously good. I have so many good memories of this thing. Week one, we brought Sword Dance because we wanted to get past an Intimidate Shuffling Shraft to you. We brought um, Sword Dance from last week. We brought Autotomize, you know, Weakness Policy before. We've brought in a ton of things we had an AP season six. I would totally draft this thing on Wi-Fi again. It is so freaking good. I absolutely loved it. Um, I figured a cool, uh, you know, snippet of, you know, a potential Necro doing really well. It's going to be from our week two of APA against Liv, where we brought a Dragon Ant set that actually went uh, crazy in this in particular matchup. I'm going to speed it up just a little bit because this is Wi-Fi, so the game goes a little bit slower and I can't really do anything crazy. As at this point, I am minus one speed because there are sticky webs up on the field, but Necro is so freaking bulky and annoying. Uh, we're going to be able to get up two Dragon Dances pretty freaking easily at this point and really, really break through my opponent's team. So we're going to change it up to two times speed. As the Toxic comes out, we were actually a Lumberry, so if we got up on another turn, uh, we would have been in an even better position, but that's completely fine in all honesty. Uh, what I'm going to do is, I believe, set up one more Dragon Dance and let's see come on Owen, what are you gonna do are you gonna set up the dragon dance yeah we're gonna set up the dragon dance and we're gonna be basically a plus two attack plus one speed which is gonna allow us to really really break through and dent our opponent's squad uh, you're gonna see that giga drain absolutely bounce we're a really bulky dd set and we're actually gonna be out of range uh, you know a good couple hits here and it's gonna really set up our end game for the rest of our team vote on guys here by rose elliott squish um and then i believe what comes out next i don't remember uh, but at this point I remember too that 51 HP was actually pretty important because I think we are out of range of a uh, Mammoth Swine Ice Shard, which is obviously super clutch. And Crustle is going to come out, and this is nice because Photon Geyser actually ignores abilities, so we're going to be able to bypass this thing sturdy, uh, which it was, it was boot sturdy. Uh, kind of knock that thing out, and then we're going to force the Mammoth Swine to come out and um, obviously lock itself into Ice Shard because this did turn out to be a banded. Man, that's fine. Regardless, my play here was just to throw off a big hit on this thing if it decided to let me stay in. And uh, if it didn't have Ice Shard, I suppose, uh, it's going to clean knock us out, but it's going to put us in a position in the end game where our Keldeo can actually go pretty, pretty crazy in this in particular instance. So just a good, good um, showcase of what Necro can really do uh, when it sets up. It didn't necessarily sweep this game, but it really showed off how strong and how versatile it is, uh, especially if you watched our APA run. If you haven't, go check it out. It was a really fun season. I'm hoping I get invited back eventually. But yeah, that's going to be Necro. Um, let's just cut really quick and then we'll do a quick outro. All right, so that's going to be our top 10 Pokemon that we've used so far, or at least my top 10 favorite Pokemon that I've used so far in the short six, seven months that um, Gen 8 has been out and this meta has been out and stuff like that. I'm sure my list will change and I want to do another part to this, uh, you know, coming up here, maybe in, you know, another six or seven months, or maybe when we have the next DLC drop, we basically have like this little pocket of post DLC um, you know, Isle of Armor type meta and stuff like that. I'll probably try some cool new stuff. I'll probably fall in love with one or two mods. And I'll probably, you know, just like another mod that I put on this list that I've already, you know, have on here or something like that. Uh, just due to me not doing as good with it or something like that. But yeah, um, let me know in the comments what Pokemon you enjoy the most, um, you know, in your short Gen 8 draft league career if you've been playing. Or, uh, you know, maybe even let me know your top 10. I would love to discuss and, you know, see what you guys are using. And maybe I'll draft it going for and stuff like that. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, if you're new, like I said before, Please be sure to drop a sub. It really does help me out. I've had a lot of support on the channel since the um, Isle of Armor DLC has dropped. And it's been phenomenal. So if we can get to 300 that, uh, soon here, that would be amazing. We're chilling at 266. It's a very high goal, um, at least in my eyes. But I would love to get there um, here soon. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to drop a like as well. Thank you guys so much for watching once again. And I will catch you guys in the next one. Later.